You won't find him on center court, but you will find him center stage, racket in hand. Peter is talking to Gabe Kaplan right now. Peter. Thanks, Jill. It's been a couple of years since I talked to Gabe. You were down at the Fountain Blue a little while ago. Yeah, two years ago. And we had some words, but uh, now you're, you're still up at Parker, right, with, uh, with your current... I'm at uh, Parker Playhouse doing doubles. Right. Joe Carcioni won't be there. Why not? Well, I called him up. He said, Gabe, I know it's a, it's a good show. It's juicy. It's in season, but I can't see it. And folks, go see it because it's a <laughs> wonderful show, doubles. So you, you see Joe Carcioni everywhere you travel, Brad? Everywhere I travel, uh, Joe Carcioni follows me. You can always turn on the television, and there's some new show that has Joe on it. And uh, it's like, you know, being at home. You see Joe. It's like your old uncle, you know. You've been, uh, well, you've been on the road with this one for four months now, you were right. saying. Mm -hmm. And not close to the end of the run yet, are you? Yes, we are. This oh, is we it. are. This we is have it. Uh, uh, four more days. This is your last chance to see doubles. Oh, no kidding. And then yeah. you're going back to L.A. to uh, make some more television? or Yeah, I'll go back to L.A. and I'll be in Atlantic City in May. Uh, and just to relax because this has been, uh, it's been a long tour. Yeah, I would, I would think it would be a grind. Uh, turn it, well, six days a week, is it? Six days a week, eight shows a week. Yeah, but you know it's it's a funny show. It's something that I wanted to do. I had offers to do a lot of different plays in the past, and I really didn't want to do any except the play I did about Groucho Marx. But this is the second play I did, and it's such a you know a funny show and something that uh, I could relate to as uh, a character that I wanted to play because I never uh, played a bad guy. Mm -hmm. This guy is an aggressive, loudmouth, uh, you know, insulting type of person, and I never played anybody like that. So. When, when, they, when I read the play, I said, I got to do this. Do you pick things up when you do theater like this that you can take back with you when you go to L.A. to try some, some other uh, avenue in television? Well, sure. I mean, it, it helps you in any kind of performing, anything you're branching out on, doing something different. Uh, playing a guy like this, you know, uh, and you hope that uh, while you're on the road, different people see you and, and, you know, and get reports that you can do something, you know, because people tend to think of me as playing a nice guy. You not think, this type of guy. You think you might try and do a bad guy when you get back to California? I'd love to. I, I did. Uh, I remember once I did a police story where I played a crazy narc who was totally flipped out but was successful in his job. And I got a lot of reaction from that when I played it, so maybe, you know, get some reaction from this. Do you have any other series you're working on you're trying to put the pieces together? Not really. I'm, I'm primarily staying away from doing something like that. Maybe in a couple of years I'll feel like getting back to that. But I worked, uh, you know so hard on, on Carter for the time that we did it and I felt that uh, well that was it that was a really slice of my life I enjoyed doing it but it's such a grind uh, to do it and anything that I'm involved in I like to uh, television wise I like to write so it becomes oh, so uh, it becomes a 16 hour day or it, more it, and, and I did it for a while so I, I think for the next few years I'll basically take it easy do some Las Vegas Atlantic City Fountain Blue something like that and maybe a play or two but Basically, I'm not looking to get back on a regular television show. Do you still you still write things? Yeah, I still write things. I write letters to my family. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're they're not in L.A., so it's long distance. Right, right, right. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's like inspiration. You get you get uh, an inspiration to do something, and then you do it. You write it. You you see something that turns you on. You say, okay, I got to write something about that. You know, I was talking to to uh, one of the guys who's a, a good friend of Peter Max. Uh -huh. And he says Peter can't create when he doesn't feel like creating. I mean, he, if he sits down and there's nothing happening, he'll just go away. Is that pretty much the same way with you when you write? It is with me. I think with, with people who are successful writers, you have to. You have to make yourself create. I'm sure a lot of times uh, Woody Allen will want to work on his next movie and not feel in the mood, but I'm sure he is disciplined enough. And Neil Simon, they're disciplined enough that they are writers and they just sit down and, and uh, you know, they, they do it. They, they hammer it out. But uh, I'm basically a performer, so uh, if I really get inspired, I do something. If not, I say, well, look, I'll go play tennis. <laughs> do, uh, do any of you guys, when, uh, when you're doing doubles, there are four of you, right? Right. Uh, do you actually go out and play tennis to get in the mood for the show? We have uh, one of uh, our understudies is a good tennis player, Bob Adrian, and uh, he's a great tennis player, but the four of us are real loxes on a tennis court. <laughs> so sometimes we do, but n not too often. No tennis elbow, huh? No, we don't get any tennis elbow. That's interesting. You, you mentioned your understudy. Is that an understudy who does understudy for everybody all at once? or uh... We have two understudies in the play. One understudies uh, one character, and this fellow, who's my understudy, is also Marty Milner's understudy, and another guy's understudy. So he understudies three roles, 
and then there's a, a girl that understudies the one female character. So basically we have three understudies that travel with us all the time. And I got sick for a week. Uh, I had bronchitis and, and he did a whole week and it was like, uh, you know, he was, he was there and it was his opportunity. And then the next week, uh, um, Marty Miller got sick, so he filled in for him for one day. So he, he was finally working after yeah, waiting for was four months. doing both roles. Yeah. And it's like you can go on a tour and never work. Yeah. You, know, you can just sit there every night hoping somebody breaks his leg. And, just, <laughs> and, they, and it and very it, rarely happens. It very rarely happens, but this time he got to work. Right. Well, Gabe Kaplan, thanks for coming in. Thank you.